Hi my friends and welcome to another exciting one. Today we are going to try something a little bit different. So today we are going to try the lazy motion library from Clever Poly. Right. So it's a very simple asset library, a drag and drop animation library for products animation to be specific. So I was there and then he contacted me whether I'm interested in reviewing and sharing it with my team. So I said why not it looks awesome and cool so let's just give it a try together. So this tutorial is going to be a little bit different. I have already have it installed but I have not gone through it yet. So I'm doing it with you guys at the same time so that we can really judge how easy and simple it is to get going. Right. So let's get started. So for the start, the installation is pretty straightforward. I think it's very simple and easy to do. You just have to go to your edit. Once you have it installed, you go to edit preference and then you add it to your asset library. So you go to file path asset library and then you hit on your plus. You locate where you extracted your installed file and then you just add it to your library, right? I'm not going to go through it the step by step here, but basically that's it. So once you have it here, it means it's already installed and you can have access to it into your assets browser, right? So to have access to your uh, lazy motion library, let's just drag this here then we change this to our assets browser then we have this, so this is where we have all our assets and then we have lazy motion library here so once you click on it you can see we have over 20 plus drag and drop motion presets or assets whatever you want to call it ready for us to go uh, so now let's take a look at it and then let's see whether it's a good buy and how easy it is to use and and all that fun stuff right so this is how it is these are all the libraries and then from what i know it works in um three separate ways so first you can easily drag and drop and then there's one which you would drag and then you drop it into your scene and then you parents um you parent the objects to your to your model and then other stuff um so this is my first time trying it out let's just go with it and then let's see what we can create and how easy it is for us to create something awesome so let me just randomly drag something into our scene and then let's see what's up what's going on or what what do we have to do so first um to before you start anything just select your object make sure you you apply your skill so i'll just do ctrl plus a to apply my skill and then i'll drag and drop this animated array into my scene for the start so let's just drag and drop it onto our can like this right so once we drop it you can see we have our array like this we have an object array and from what i know i think it's using geometry nodes so everything all the presets you can easily customize it to make it fit your project or you can make it fit your style whatever you want to create so with this selected let's go to our modify style I guess that's where you see it. Yeah. So once we come to our modifier tab, we can see we have our animated array which is being added, right? So let me hit on play and let's see whether it animates. So once I hit on play, okay, nothing happens. I think we have a slider here which says animate, right? So let's add an animation to the slider and then let's see. So once it's set at um, 500, so I'll just drag my timeline forward like this. Now right click. I'll insert keyframe, and then I'll drag my timeline back. Click on here, set the keyframe to zero, and then let's right click. Let's no, let's right click and then insert keyframe once again. And then now let's hit on play. Yeah, so as easy as that, we can easily animate our object. So that's not it. We can play with the skill. I think we can play with the skill. It's pretty straightforward. We can play with the distance of the animation. We can play with the count. Do we want more count or small count? This is using instances. So, um, and then geometry nodes. So, as you can see, it's very simple. Um, what does mirror does? Okay, I don't know. Let's go. And we can offset the rotation. So, let's do X. And then, um, one cool thing to is everything that has this dot here means it can be animated right so 
let me set this back to zero and then let's try and animate this as well right so we can come to frame 40 right click insert keyframe go back and then add something like this and then right click and then insert keyframe and then let's hit on play yeah so just like that i've created something unique something and um, beautiful you can go through it we have offset location let me add something we can animate this as well and then we have z so we can do something like this and then you see we have a checkbox which is affect by affect animation so once the checkbox is checked i guess this offset will start from zero and then it goes like this or we can just uncheck and then it doesn't affect the animation it just starts and then it ends so whatever works for you yeah so i think it's pretty straightforward let's play with other other cool stuff in here and then let's see what we get so with this can selected i think i can just select this and then delete it from our scene and then we come back to our default let me just select all the keyframes and then delete them so that we have our default so let's try something else it's pretty straightforward um let's see let's check this slide in handmade animation so i think these are handmade animations that he's created so let me just drag so you see this works different than the other one this is not dragging and dropping on the object you just have to drag and drop it into your scene like this right then let's hit on play so this i think the animation is already done for you so you can see so with this what you have to do is since the animation is already done for you and then there are keyframes already set for you what you have to do is we have to parent our our model to the animation for the animation to work yeah i think it's it's, it's like that so what we can do is we select this and then we can do control s to, to save and then we can do control shift s and then we can do um Keza to select it um, our Keza is not in the right position. We can do shift right click to just bring our Keza here and then we can do select this shift S and then selection to what is it selection to Keza just to bring it in position like this. Oh yes still let me just select let me select this and then hold shift select this control C yeah and then we can do copy location right just to copy this and bring it into position like this then we can come to this side and then maybe i have to i have to select this position it in place nicely like this and then finally we can position it in place like this and then we can select this hold shift select this then control plus p parent keep transform then maybe we can hide this at the end so let me just hit on h to hide it then let's go back then let's hit on play yeah so just like that we've created our nice sliding motion yeah so with this i think you can just use your camera let me lock my camera frame my camera into scene like this my camera let me go back to camera let me hide depth of field like that and then let's go back yeah so just like that we can select our main object r to rotate it in place go back hit on play yeah so just like that we create some nice animation yeah so i think it's pretty straightforward it's easy it can give you help you get some cool animations in no time and um, let's check out one last thing so we can just select this hit on x to delete i guess to come back to our default and then we have some to that we have to do some simulation i think this one like this does cloth simulation then we have this softball that does cloth simulation as well then we have water bending which will be cool let me just drag and drop it quickly into our scene to see what we have so once we have this yeah so i think it creates a water flow let me go back and let's hit on play and then nicely we have this water 
that goes that goes around the spiral. And then we can play with everything, just as I said. I think it's using geometry nodes, so everything is procedural, and then everything is editable. So you can increase your speed, increase the flow, increase the width, make it bigger or smaller. Play with the bubbles. We can do bubble offsets or edge bubbles and then you can easily create water and then i think another cool thing too is we can play with this um, curve once we go into edit mode play with the curve let the water follow the curve wherever you want the curve to be as easy as that yeah so this is just an overview and so far I, i'm really enjoying um, working with this I want to keep this tutorial, this video short. Um, if you like it, I'm going to make a very long tutorial on this. Once I get very familiar with it, I will make a long, long, a very long tutorial play, um, playing with everything inside this. And then I think one cool thing too is one, every time, um, let's say you want to try something else. So let me just hit on X to delete this. Then let's say we want to try this easy grid. Easy grid. So let's just select this drag and drop it into a scene right and then let's hit on play right so with this i think what we have to do is to select the object we we'll go to object and then we can select our can right then once we select our object and we can come to our modifier stop and then play with the let me i think it will be distance this is very straightforward and then let's play with the okay this is x and y so this is it this okay um platform okay yeah we have to play with the platform height just for everything to fall in place so once you select everything like something like this and then you you don't really know how it works he has done a great job so he has a mini tutorial here you just have to copy and then paste it into your browser and then you'll be able to watch a straightforward mini tutorial so let me go here you can see we have a straightforward mini tutorial just four minutes that show you specifically how to use that specific thing you want to use so you can just quickly jump into it watch the mini tutorial and then get what you want and then you can pop back into your blender and then continue right so just as that you'll be able to create some um, cool and amazing stuff so i think it's very cool for that for the price he's asking let me just check his website for this 49 dollars it's very cool you'll be able to create a very um beautiful animations in no time and once you, you 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 hit it up and you start running with it once you have the money and then you make the purchase this will save you a lot of time and i think you'll be able to make your money back in no time it's my friend and uh, i love it and yeah if you want to purchase it please check his um, site i'm going to leave a link in the description below for you to grab it yeah or, or whatever and um, see you on the next one and peace out